Good morning. Thank you for coming to our Sunday Resurrection Service, the Sunday Church. I am the Most Reverend Edikai Merai. Thank you so much. We now have two services for the Sunday Church. The first service will always take place at 7 p.m. on Saturday evening. That's Central Time, 7 p.m. Central Time on Saturday evening. On the second Sunday service, the Sunday church, the second one takes place at 7 a.m. Central Time on Sunday morning. You are not obliged to come to both of them unless you want to. The services will not be the same, they'll be different, but the services, both of them last for at least 30 minutes not more than that. So that you come to church and you go home fresh and you are able to remember all that was done and all that you are asked to go and put into practice. So for those of you who live in the west coast of the United States, it is good that you come to the Saturday evening services because 7 a.m. is 5 a.m. your time that's too early for you and for those of you in Europe and Asia and Africa either you come to the Sunday church on Sunday morning at 7 a.m. central time or you come to the one uh, at 7 p.m. on Saturday so it all depends on what will work for you. My job is to make you happy. My job is to make life easy for you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we ask that in everything that we do, that you give us direction so that we have solid foundation. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 I want you to lift up your concern, whatever is the need, the reason why you came to church, I want you to ask God to make them available to you. I want you to ask God to fill you with new power and new strength. Because we have asked in the name of Jesus, all that we have requested has been granted to us, both now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Let us hear the Amen. reading of the Word of God. Amen. I do hear an echo, so someone can please. Genesis chapter 12, verse 10 through 12. Verse 10 through 20. And there was a famine in the land. And Abram went down into Egypt to, so, to sojourn there. For the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt that he said unto Sarai his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, 
that they shall say, this is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, that thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. And it came to pass that when Abram was come into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. The princess also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And he entreated Abram well for her sake. And he had sheep and oxen and his asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why saidest thou, she is my sister? So I might have taken her to me to wife? Now therefore, behold thy wife, take her and go thy way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him. And they sent him away and his wife and all that he had. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. There will always be times on the earth that the earth is commanded there will always be a famine in the land there will always be a famine in the land. The earth will be commanded at certain times to go on a Sabbath. not to produce the universe will always be told not to produce because the universe need to recover every seven years the earth is supposed to be allowed to recover. Just like a woman bringing life to the earth, a baby, she should be given the opportunity to recover before making more and more and more babies.
when the earth is not given the opportunity to rest will have severe famine I remember in 2018 I did a very big garden. I harvested a lot. In 2014, I did the same gardening. There was nothing. In fact, when I went out to start the gardening, I heard a voice from heaven said to me, this is not the year to plant. This is the year to harvest. I said, what am I going to harvest? I'm not planting. He said, all the ministry things you've been doing, you are going to harvest. Do not plant because there is a famine this year. So I thought, I thought that was a joke. I went ahead and planted nothing. I did it twice, nothing. Then I went out to the suburbs and I began to see that there was a great famine. It's a big famine. Animals died. Crops didn't grow. Whatever grew, the sun beat it to death. Everywhere. You must prepare for famine. You must prepare for famine. You must prepare for famine. Joseph show us how to do it well. Joseph, the son of Jacob. God showed him how to prepare for famine. In the reading of this morning, something went wrong. The time of famine is not the time of fleeing or the time of going to somewhere where there is no famine. We saw it in the story of Elimelech with Naomi and their two sons and how Naomi became a widow and also a woman without no, none of her sons. People leave their countries and migrate to America, to Europe, to Asia, to other places, to Canada, to England, to escape from hardship of life in their country. But that could also lead to your death. That could also lead to severe suffering. Like we say when we were kids, running from the frying pan to fire. Same thing happened to Lot, Abraham's nephew. Saw the well watered Sodom and Gomorrah, but it wasn't worth it. In this story, Abraham did not ask, even though he carried the altar of the Lord. He carried God's presence as a prince of the kingdom of God. We see some mistakes here, some loopholes here. Abraham did not ask God for direction. He simply migrated to Egypt with his wife, and household.
Some people, when things are hard, they want to change their job. Others want to have a divorce. These are times that you should sit down and ask God, how do I profit? How do I succeed in this kind of event happening in world history? When you do not ask God for direction concerning a bad event that is happening, evil will be waiting at the corner. Because every bad thing that happens and every good thing that happens, there are forces that want to use it for evil. There are people who want to use even the very good things you've done for them. They want to use it against you. It's, it's like when in, in Joe Biden administration, money was being given, the stimulus was being given to businesses, to organizations to families, to individuals. And some people criticize him. But whoa, curse be them. Because while they were criticizing him for giving stimulus money, they were busy collecting the same money. That's not fair. That shows that you are a child of pure evil and wickedness of the highest kind. Hypocrisy is evil parading as a human being. You didn't want your daughters to get it. You didn't want your son to get it. That's what you told people. You attack the Democrat. Oh, they are spending American money. They are spending American money. And yet, you, your daughters, your families, everybody were collecting it. You were. So you are not worthy to be a human being. Because you think you are smart. You are now a politician. You should get them out of office. And you forgot that if that stimulus was not given, a lot of Americans would not have survived the COVID. They would not have survived the famine. Just like Obama bailed out the banks, bailed out the car companies, and the same good thing he did in order to maintain American tradition and superpower over the world was being used against him. He shouldn't have bailed out the banks. He shouldn't have bailed out the car company. If he allowed the same companies to go bankrupt and out of business, the same people will stand up. That's why he said hypocrisy is evil, pure evil, masquerading as human beings. They would have used the same thing. You see? See what this guy has just done? He has allowed the banks to go broke. Now all the world, they came and they saved their money in America. Now look at it now. Now everybody's broke because Obama didn't want to help them. You see it? And the entire world knows that we Americans are two faces or three phases. However it suits us to be in power, we will run with whatever feels emotion 
emotional enough that people can use to run with, we'll throw it out there. We don't care. A lot of your churches today, out there, from Pentecostal to Evangelical to Roman Catholics, they are still alive because of the stimulus package. A lot of the businesses that are shouting, oh, he's distributing American money, spending money. Almost everyone that I met during the stimulus time, from small little cottage businesses to the big corporations, they all receive stimulus money. And still, even those who received it were still shouting because they were disappointed that an evil man was kicked out of power. I keep saying to every American, you should be very grateful. You don't know what you were delivered from. You don't know. You have no idea what you were delivered from, from Mr. Trump and his crooks. You have no idea what you were delivered from. If Americans only knew what they were delivered from, they would be happy that another regime came. I don't care whether Joe Biden stays there for four years. He has done very good things for this country. If we decide not to appreciate the good thing that man has done with his government, then we are evil people. If we decide not to appreciate what Mike Pence did to save America from the hand of a dictator, Mike Pence, a Republican, the former vice president, if we refuse to acknowledge it, then we are wicked people. will not have no future. A lot of us think, we think that politics is a game. There is a place where it's no longer a game. When human beings begin to die, and you use that to be in control and power, you are pure evil. You are not a good person. You shouldn't have been born. When bad things happen, that's the time to ask God for direction. Abraham did not. So the technicality started. What to say to the people of the land and what not to say. And Sarai became a concubine to Pharaoh, to the king. One of the concubines. Let's call it for what it is. Sarai was not taken into the king's palace to just go and sit there and eat food. She became a concubine. And Abraham was settled. Abraham was taken care of. Okay, that's your sister. Abraham was settled with wealth. He was given wealth. Listen, everybody. This is a woman who is an elderly woman was still looking young. Still very beautiful. That tells you that Sarah was a woman who knows how to package herself. Do you as a woman knows how to package yourself even at the age of elderhood when you are an elderly person? Somebody sees you at the age of 80. You look like you are still in your 20s. Do you know how to package yourself? Or you let yourself go? What are you willing to eat? What medicine are you willing to take? What surgery are you willing to do? To remain young. To have youthfulness. And not say that it's because you are 50, 40, 60, that's why you can't do this. That's why you look this way. That's an elderly woman looking like she is still in her 20s and 30s.
Pharaoh gave wealth to Abraham for allowing him to have the sister, his wife. And Abraham didn't say anything. When God is not consulted, things will go wrong. I am where I am today. I am doing what I do today because my father dared to consult God about me. And he opened his mouth and poured out a blessing on me before he left the earth. Abraham entertained fear. Abraham had a bit of that coward thing we are talking about. In spite of the fact that he carried the oracle, he is the oracle of God in his generation. He's bold, he's powerful. And yet in the face of other powerful human beings, he chicken out. Hallelujah. 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 See, I don't know whether this is the first time Abraham is in the presence, in a location of style, quality, and wealth. Egypt has always had one thing. Ancient Egypt has always had one thing. They were very detailed and they were well ahead of everybody else in terms of the production of food, the preservation of food. When other nations suffer famine, Egypt didn't suffer famine. They were always prepared for it. For some reason, Egypt has been where people, people's life were saved. People went there for security and food and prosperity. Shouldn't that be how we should turn our nations? Shouldn't our nations be a place where people can flee for security and prosperity? That's where Jesus was taken to, for security. For him to be protected. Egypt has played that role very well. So seeing that there was food in Egypt and prosperity, Abraham automatically migrated there. But now he has lost his wife to the king. And he didn't have enough balls to say, that's my wife. At least if you are migrating into somebody's country, you should find out their laws, the way they do things, and so on and so forth. Abraham is a mighty prince before the Lord. But I, I have no idea why that kind of a thing run. It ran in Abraham's family. When, when he should be bold, he wasn't. He was afraid. Was it because for the first time Abraham went into a wealthy country? And he himself was not wealthy until that Pharaoh made him wealthy. A king made Abraham wealthy for the first time. His wife now become Pharaoh's concubine. Go and, go and trace history, you will see. Egypt has always been the country that brokered peace 
between Israel and the rest of the Arab world. They've always had peace with Israel, with the children of Abraham. There is a mixture between Israelite DNA and Egyptian DNA. Egyptian DNA and Israelite DNA. And remember that the ancient Egyptians we are talking about, they were not Arabs. Remember that they were ancient African people, dark-skinned people, remember that, brown-skinned people, remember that. They were not colored people. There is nothing like colored people. Everybody has a color. Don't let anybody use that on you. Stupid people use that to try to define people. He's black, he's white, he's, he's brown. What has that got to do with life? That's why I want to make sure that I am greater than my generation. I want to be bigger and wealthier than my generation. Already among my colleagues, I'm far ahead of all of them. In every way you can think of it. Why? Because the blessed one lives in me and that's why I'm blessed. Ancient intelligence works in me. Ask God for direction before you migrate. A man will look at a woman because of her educational qualification, a rich family that she comes from or belongs to, the name that is already famous, or she has people who lives in overseas they will go to go and marry that woman. The same thing with women marrying a man in some instances. There's something they've seen that they feel is gonna profit them. They're gonna have food. They're gonna have cars. They're gonna have money. And when you enter there, problem will start. Because you were not meant to be there. You shouldn't have gone there. There are people who came to overseas the last 40, 50 years. They are sleeping under the bridge. Doesn't mean that because you are born in America that automatically you become rich. That because you join the Democrat or Republicans, you're gonna be made rich. That's not true. You're going to even be made poor. Because the rich will take from the poor. You must learn. You have to learn. Doesn't mean that because you were born in a certain racial group that automatically that gives you advantage. It doesn't. If you are not willing to be a real human being, you won't have the wealth of this earth. Others will use you to make wealth and they will give you a little pita and a pence. What I teach is hard truth. It's not for everybody. Everybody cannot, they cannot practice the kind of Christianity or the kind of business practice that I have. They are not built for that. I've gone through hardship since I was born. I've seen the Lord. So what I'm telling you is not coming because I'm trained for it, is because the Lord has appeared to me. Now this is not because this guy is a clergy, no. 
he's working for some racial group. I'm not interested in racial groups. I'm interested in all racial groups, all of them. That's why some people make the mistake when they see me. Oh, he's from Africa. Uh, he must be running an organization for black people. No. Nope. Go and find out how many people of African ancestry are in our, in our mission. 90% of people that I come to solve problems for are people of European descendants. Majority of them. Ask God for direction before you enter into places that you think there is prosperity, there is food, there is everything. God saw the weakness of Abraham. He saw his weaknesses. And he came to the rescue. Because that man is God's business. He carries God's plan. He carries a history that was now unfolding that is going to affect nations and peoples. His wife is the one who is going also to make that history happen. And how can now his wife, his a concubine, to our king? In the face of a mighty civilization, be prepared. Abraham was not prepared. But he went to Egypt unprepared. Unprepared. What happened? He lost his wife. But then, even though Abraham has made a mistake, God came to the rescue. The man who carried the altar will always attract God's visitation. And God now wanted Pharaoh to understand. Sickness, cancer, sores, all kind of diseases continuously COVID whatever of that time all kind of bacteria and germs and problems broke out on Pharaoh and on his household and remember this were people that practiced magic and sorcery and witchcraft so Pharaoh went to go and find out why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to my household? Then he got he got it. This is coming from the possessor of the heavens and the earth. The one who made the heavens and the earth. He's saying to you, you see that Sarai, that concubine of yours? She's somebody's wife. Because it's not, it's not written in the Bible how, how Pharaoh knew. But he knew. The Lord plagued him. And he knew it was the Lord. So he called Abraham and said to him, why didn't you tell me this was your wife? They can't leave town. Pharaoh was very angry at him because he's been punished for what he didn't know. And Abraham said, I thought that if I told you guys, you guys would slay me. He said, leave town. 
I've already given you the wealth you need. Go. This is a very serious thing that happens. First, we are not told how many years Sarai was a concubine to the Pharaoh. It's not written. We don't know. It must have been many years. And this time, Abraham was living in opulence. He had wealth. Pharaoh gave Abraham women and men. So the question is, who was Abraham sleeping with? All these years that Sarah was away. Tell me. See, the Bible is not written for us to protect those that it was, those who are in the story. The Bible is written for us to enter into it. And become better people. Make better judgments. So Abraham left Egypt. We are not told how long the famine was in the land of Canaan. We are not told everything. It's not systematic. But you can imagine Abraham lived in Egypt for years. Finally, he took his wife and left town. Remember when Victoria read, she read a, a portion there that said, Pharaoh gave words to his men concerning Abraham. And you can imagine what word Pharaoh might have said to his people about Abraham. Be careful about that man. His God almost killed me. I am asking you today to make a decision to be bold. Okay, what about if his wife was killed? What about if he himself was killed? So, one way or the other, he should have told the truth. One way or the other. I am not here to tell you that God turned he, what has happened into Abraham becoming wealthy. I'm not here to say that. But what that tells you is that the Pharaoh that we are dealing with in this story was a good person. I am asking God to give you the gift of boldness. To protect your wife. To protect your husband. To protect your children. That's the reason why you are families. Don't run away. And don't lie at a time that you should protect those that you loved. What about Eve? Pharaoh did not find favor on Sarah and decided to kill her or give her away in marriage to some other king or some other prince or prince something. Do not because you want to save your own life put other people's life in danger. Well, let's look at it very well. People, let's look at it very well. Let's be honest. 
whose life was in danger? Was it the life of Abraham or was it the life of Sarah? Whose life was really in danger here? The life of Sarah. The life of Sarah was in danger. Not Abraham. Yes, in ancient history it has been known of men being killed and their wife being taken. But this Pharaoh was a different kind of Pharaoh. Don't just assume things because of what you've heard. Many of us, we don't know a person very well, we judge them. We don't know a culture already, you judge them. Oh, this is how white people behave. Oh, this is how black people behave. Oh, this is how Spanish people behave. These are how Arab behave. You generalize, you just categorize them all as one. I learned something from people of European descendant, European Americans, very quickly. Let's say we are going to see a house. There's a house I want a showing. Going to see a house whether I should buy it or not. And I am there. Ten minutes before, ten minutes early. Twelve noon, that's when the house will be shown to me. And I'm there, I say, 11.45. I'm there, waiting. Then it's 12. Then 12.15. Then I call, I call the, um, the realtor, the broker, the agent. Where are you? Oh, I'm on my way. I don't say anything that this is how, this is how people of European descendants, they are always late. No. And then the person, oh, my child was doing this. Oh, my husband was doing this. Oh, this happened, this happened. I said, all right, all right. Take, take time, do it. I'll wait. And yet, there was a time that I was like, five minutes. I'm, I'm almost there. And the guy began to talk. This is how you blacks. I say, hey, okay, enter your car and leave. Don't come back. I don't need your services. He said, I said, because you, you have been late. Five times you've been late. You want me to read it to you? Say, so you see, you are a very evil person. You are not just stupid, but you are a fool. When you come late, 30 minutes, there have been one that you were late for an hour. And I did not say, this is how white people behave. But I'm five minutes. Five minutes getting there. And you were already screaming. See? That's the kind of thing that I cannot handle. Such people, I simply just let them go. I cannot stand them. I don't care what culture or racial group. You're already screaming. Black people are always late. But you, you came late. One hour. Nobody screamed at you. You gave us the excuse. So the excuse why you came one hour is good. And the excuse why I came two minutes late is not good. And when I see people who practice that kind of stuff, I don't mingle with them anymore. I just let them go. I borrowed money to someone of European descendants. Came to me crying. I loaned them a hundred bucks. Said, that's all you guys need? I said, yeah. Sign, they sign. Up till today, they cannot honor their own promise. 
I'm not even sure. For hundred dollars, they fled Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> you call them on the phone, they are not there. And you don't hear me say, this is how white people behave. They are all scammers and schemers and con artists. But if someone of African descendants cannot honor that same date and time, you see some people of European descendants will go off on them, call the cops, all kind of drama. Because you are prepared, if someone of a different color, you are going to, you to show you are superior. That's stupid. It's all about class. That's why I've taken my time to decide what class to mingle with. Even if you are a professional in your field does not mean that I'm going to need your service. <laughs> Ask God for direction. Don't, don't make decisions based on emotions. Don't do it. Don't make decisions based on hearsay, generalization. Put everybody in a particular class. Go and talk to people from the Caribbean, from Africa, from the Middle East, all this kind of thing, who were in Ukraine, trying to leave the country, especially students, trying to leave the country. And they were told to go back and stay there and get bombed because of their color. They showed it, you go, go to CNN and see it. Poland will not even welcome people of African ancestry who were living in Ukraine, going to school in Ukraine. That's why the Caribbean country came with their own plane to take their own people out of that place. The African countries came, took their own people and left. We are trying to save Ukraine, and Ukraine is trying to do racial discrimination. Can you imagine this? And they forgot that if World War III broke out, African people have been known. The Syrians have been known. These are ancient fighters. The Norwegians have been known. To be recruited by people of European descent and to come and fight for them. Go and look at First World War. Go and look at the war in Burma, now Myanmar. Go and look at the Second World War. Let's stop. Let's stop this. Let's stop this nonsense of racial things because you are going to exclude out of your life people who will have made you a billionaire. Yeah. You, you, you know, you see, huh? one thing people do not understand is this. When you make your decisions based on race and tribe, you know what will happen to you? God will walk away from you. Because you are, let, let me warn everybody. When you start to make, to see if your worldview is purely political, racial, and religious, and sometimes gender oriented only. The planet for men, not for women. <coughs> you are telling God that he is a stupid God. That he should not have made the Chinese, the Vietnamese, the Japanese, the Africans, the Caribbeans, the Middle Eastern. That's what you are saying. Or you are saying you should not have made people of European descendants if you are the other side. That God has no right to make them. And who are you to tell God who he is to make or not make? Who are you? 
How dare you? Do you know what you are doing? You are removing yourself from heaven and you are putting yourself in hell. That's exactly what you are doing. Let them keep brainwashing you. Let them keep brainwashing you. The more they brainwash you, the less rich you become. The more poor you become. Let them keep brainwashing you. Many of you have already made up your mind. Because since the time you were born, you've been brainwashed. You can't think for yourself. You can't stand up for yourself. Abraham could not stand up for himself. He couldn't stand up for his wife. Somebody else now is paying the price for it. The king. Even if somebody looks good, even if the place looks good, ask God, is this where you are for me? Should I go in here or not? You are going to see in the life of Isaac. Isaac wanted to make the same mistake that his father made. And God told him, do not go into Egypt. Enough of this Egypt business. Until the time of Joseph that Egypt happened again. The two Josephs. Joseph son of Jacob and Joseph son of David taking Mary and Jesus and fleeing to Egypt. Don't go to anywhere simply because it's a, it's a nice place. It looks nice. Everything that looks nice is not always good. Everywhere that looks like there is prosperity, might, there might not be any prosperity for you in that place. So why do you keep doing the same thing, going to the same place? Because everybody there are there. You must go. Everyone are in New York. There is food in New York. There is the subway in New York. So go and live in New York and you will go there and become trash. You can't pay your bill. Nothing. God is God in New York for you. You want to go to Egypt? Is God is in Egypt for you? You want to go to Canada? You'll go to Canada and lose everything. You'll go to Europe and become a nuisance. Is God there for you? Is your God there for you? Is your Jesus there for you? The blessing of the Lord make it rich and he does not add any sorrow to it. Think about what I've said. Don't go because the place is nice. Go because your God is there for you. <coughs> Please, people should mute their phones. If, if you have problem with your phone, mute it. Eternal Father, we ask that your spirit, your Holy Spirit, come upon this gift of bread and wine that it will be for us a communion in the body and blood of Jesus, our Messiah. In the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took this holy bread and blessed and said, This represent me. Whenever you eat this, remember what I've done for you. Do this to remember me. Do this in memory of me. Which means pay a price for what you can do it to do. Your assignment required detail, required focus. Your assignment and destiny on the earth requires you to pay a price for it. When they are finished eating, he took the cup. 
fill it with wine and told them to drink all of it. He prepared them before he went on the tree and was, and was killed. He told them this wine represent his blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant for the remission of sins. This is the blood that brings you back to the Father, that removes you from hell, a journey to hell, to a journey to heaven. He told them, drink this, all of you, in memory, to remember him. And this is not just to remember Jesus. Whenever you break the bread, you drink the wine. Remember that you are to be like Jesus. In your own little way, in your own little corner, do something great on the earth. Something that is not going to destroy human lives, but something that is going to contribute to it. Victoria, remind us of the three people that we should pray for throughout this week. Remember the family of Vivian? Yes. Her children and the grandchildren family. and and me. Because uh -huh. uh -huh. when you when you mention Vivian's family, she claims me too. So there is no way uh -huh. I can get out of it. So remember throughout this week to pray for the family of Vivian. Her, her mm -hmm. children and grandchildren and me and myself as part of their family. Amen. Also, we are to pray for the family of Anne of Norway. Anne of Norway. Yes. And her children and me. Anne Amen. belonged to the order of the children. So she was so pissed that I asked people to pray for her and her kids and I did not add me as part of that family. So please do pray for us. Also, please do pray for Segi of Yay. Vancouver, Washington. Please pray for Segi. He's from Ukraine. Pray for God to prosper him. Everybody, please join me as we recite the Lord's Prayer. Please unmute yourself and let's go. Our Father, Everyone, let's go. Everything that we brought to this altar, O oh Lord, we believe, we know that we have been given an answer. Break the bread and eat it. And pick the cup and drink from it. Remember that we depend on you to keep our program up in the air and online and everywhere and to run the Dikai Mary's mission. Remember, we depend on your generosity. Give to the Itika Imeri mission. If you shop a lot at Amazon, make sure that you choose us, Itika Imeri Ministry, as the charity that you want to donate to.
An Amazon smile. Amazon smile. Oh, yeah. An Amazon smile. Also, if you want to send your money orders and checks, send it to P.O. Box 2491, Wichita, Kansas State, 67201, USA. You can also send money to us through Zelle, Edika Emery 2000 at gmail.com, or you can use this mobile phone number, 316-512-6944. We will have Lent program on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., and we will have Today's Your Day on Friday at 7 p.m. Saturday evening is the first Sunday service, and 7 a.m. on Sunday is the second Sunday service. Let 